All right. Hi, everybody, and welcome to episode number 31 of the ASP Net Monsters. In today's episode, Dave is going to show us how to add a new package to the project. And because he is a glutton for punishment, that new package is going to be Bootstrap 4. Uh, so take it away, Dave. Yeah, I just wanted to go through and show how it is that you, let's say there's a new version of a package that you're already using maybe in your application. You want to reference that package. How do you update uh, how do you go through that process? I thought I'd use Bootstrap because, as you said, I'm a bit of a glutton for punishment, but also uh, there is a new version of Bootstrap being released here, Bootstrap 4. By Bootstrap 4, aren't we already bootstrapped? Like, can we, can we change the name something, something else now? Maybe. Additional straps? Yeah, Velcro. <laughs> There's got to be a project called Velcro already. Oh, probably. <laughs> Apparently the internet is slow today. Oh, I'm going to blame it on Bootstrap slow. 4. Alpha. It is an alpha. OK, we'll get back to that. But <laughs> So if we look at, so I just did a file new project here. So it's just the standard file new project. Still on RC1, because that's, that's the one that's out there and publicly available. But this is referenced using Bower, and if we look at our dependencies here on the, in the project tree, we can see there's Bootstrap uh, version 3.3.5. And if I right-click on this and I go Manage Bower Packages, I get this dialog here that looks something like our NuGet package manager, but this is referencing Bower for client-side packages. And I can do the check pre-releases, and I can click on Bootstrap, and it appears that it just doesn't work. So this tooling is still pretty early on, but version 4 should show up here. It doesn't. So we'll just close this, and I'll show you what that actually does under the hood, just so that you know exactly how this Bower thing works. And it's actually pretty simple. Uh, the file's hidden by default, so if I just go show all files and scroll down, there's a bower.json here. And in that file, it lists our dependencies. Simple enough. So there's Bootstrap. And what we want to do is actually reference. So we're going to change the reference from version 3.3.5 uh, to this new version 4 alpha 2. So years ago, I would have done this using NuGet. And now I'm going to use Bower for that? Bower, or you might use NPM. There's a few different ways you could do it. And okay, we'll so what's the right way? Right now, Bower. OK. Um, there's there's no one right way really. A lot of people are using NPM just so that they don't have to use multiple uh, package managers. They can use just NPM for everything uh, JavaScript and CSS related, and then NuGet just for your your uh, .NET packages. Uh, the the way the project template ships today, it's NPM for uh, JavaScript packages like Gulp that you would use as a developer to actually so build the application. Like NPM for tools, Bower for Bower for the client-side packages client -side, that you actually yeah. ship okay. with the product, and then NuGet for your .NET packages. OK, sounds good. So as soon as I save this file, uh, in the bottom right here, or actually up in, huh. well, that loaded. The Bootstrap page loaded. Nice. So as soon as I save that, you can see that it says Bower Restoring here. My, and it, it notices that I currently have 3.3.5 installed, but that's the wrong version. It's going to go and repair that for me. Now, I think I read that the alpha bits are actually not up on all the public feeds. So unless you do a direct reference, even though you put that pre-release flag in, it might not be... Uh, that package might not be picked up. So I, I think oh, it has okay. something to do with that. So when you do specify an explicit version number, I think it pulls it down for you. But otherwise, I, I don't know if it's a tooling problem or a feed problem, but I've read that you can just kind of expect a problem uh, right now trying right. to get at the pre-release bits. So this is like a special hidden pre-release. Exactly. Only for special so. people who watch this video. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> okay, so it looks like it has restored, and Visual Studio just flashed off my screen. But now we can see, I can, there's my Bootstrap 4, and I can actually open this in File Explorer just so we can actually see what's going on here. 
and those Bower packages all get installed in a lib folder under www.root, so that's the folder that actually gets published as part of our application. And under here, under bootstrap slash dist, for distribution you get the actual files that, so the bootstrap, uh, JavaScript, and CSS files that we can ship with our app. So the next step now is to actually go and change where our application is referencing these, or at least go see if there, there's a need to change anything. And those are referenced because they're referenced globally everywhere in our app. It's under the layout CSHTML. So this is something we, I don't know that we've talked about, but there's these environment tag helpers here. So all this is doing is saying that if we're in development, we're going to include these CSS files, but if we're in staging or production, we're going to include them differently. So it's going to the CDN instead. So the location of the files for development, that actually hasn't changed. It's the same location. Uh, but we do need to change the CDN pieces here. So I happen to have copied those here, which I just got from the Bootstrap site. But the location of those has changed. And then the JavaScript is referenced down at the bottom here. Same kind of thing. Changing the reference there. And because the output of those files in the distribution folder are the same, you don't have to update the Bootstrap CSS or the Bootstrap JSS or JS in the development environment because it's the same artifact. Yeah, it just happens to be the in the same location, which is handy for this upgrade. But uh, upgrading other packages mm, might, might not, not be the be case. So right. Right. So so far, it's been pretty easy, and we should be able to actually run this now. And we'll take a look at what it looks like. I'm excited. This is the future, right? This is the way that all the startup websites are going to look in a year's time. That's right. Yeah. They're all going to look like the default bootstrap template. Yeah, but now they're going to be default bootstrap for us, so that's cool. That's right. <laughs> all fancy like. So as that loads then, and I mean, on that note, Dave, there's right now you're pulling in this package that includes the distributable artifacts from the build, but there's obviously um, other options for that that you could pursue if you wanted to customize the, the CSS and JavaScript. Yeah, that's right. So when we pulled that down from Bower, it actually included all the source files as well. So Bootstrap is using SCSS SAS to, to do all their CSS pieces. And there's actually a way that we could change that and just define our own variables. We could define our own color scheme, our own variables to customize Bootstrap, and then compile it as part of our Gulp build process. So we'll take a look at that in another episode, because it's kind of a whole different uh, topic. But it's, it's not that hard to do. Definitely done it on quite a few projects. And not even limited to. Uh, ASP.NET Core, it's something that you can do in your MVC5 projects too. Right so on. I've got this running, but it looks like things are not behaving the way we would expect because it, things have changed in this package, uh, especially with the way you define your, your nav bar at the top here. So um, I've just taken, I fixed this up before we did this video here. And this is one of the things that they changed with Bootstrap 4 is that things are generally a little easier to look at in terms of how they've nested things. So instead of all those weird nested divs, we actually just have a nav. And then inside there, there's a, an inner div, and then we just have our links. So it's a little less nested in terms of how we define these things, uh, which is nice. It'll be cleaner syntax in general. And now if I refresh this, it should look more like we would expect. There we go. That's our nav bar at the so top. Very nice. We've updated to Bootstrap 4. A couple other things that are a little tangential, but I just wanted to note, note here is that when we look at these production and staging versions here where we're, we're referencing the CSS files, uh, you'll notice that it's so re the href is referencing just the location. So that's what you would expect on the CDN. So go grab that from the CDN. But there's also the, this fallback piece here. So it's saying, <coughs> The fallback concept is that it, you should always have this in your applications if you're referencing from a CDN. There's a chance that CDN might be down or that 
maybe not maybe not the CDN is down, but sometimes your uh, the the person accessing your site is behind a firewall, a corporate firewall that's blocking access to that particular CDN. That actually happens more than you would expect. So you have this fallback where it does a test first, to, or it does a test to see did that actually load, and if not, then reference it from our act, our site instead. So that then it's saying fallback reference it here which is on our site and the way it does that is by testing to see if this class exists so sr only is a class that <clears throat> i guess they've decided is pretty specific to bootstrap it shouldn't exist anywhere else in our application so if that doesn't exist um, then go and grab that from our local site instead and then same kind of thing with the the referencing the script part of it the test here is checking to see if uh, the modal function has defi been defined as a jQuery plugin, which is what Bootstrap does. It has that Bootstrap modal function. So that's the test, and then if it's not there, then reference it locally from our site. Excellent. So that's about it for upgrading uh, in this way using Bower. And obviously, if you're upgrading from Bootstrap three to Bootstrap four, there's as you as we saw from the um, the nav bar, there's going to be a lot of different things that you're going to need to address. It's it's dependent on the library. It's depending on the break and cha breaking changes that are included. It's not going to necessarily be just a straightforward upgrade from a V three to another major version and then away you go. No, not at all. And they have migration guidance here that kind of explains all the changes that happened. Uh, they have a bit of a summary, and then they talk about specifically each component and how it changed. Uh, so it, it's definitely not an easy upgrade, but in terms of mm -hmm. pulling down those new bits, at least that part's pretty easy using the package manager. Awesome. Yeah, it's probably not something you have to worry too much about updating once you've got a look and feel for your site. True. I don't know. Is that like something that's a great major advantage in Bootstrap 4 that would prompt me to move to it? Uh, I don't think there is. I mean, there's. I, I mean, again, this is going to vary from package to package, but in the case of Bootstrap, there are new components that are available. The cards yeah. are the big one. Um, the simplification of some of the form elements, certainly the simplification of things like the nav bar, those are interesting, but those are not necessarily a driver. Cards tend to be the big one, the one that you might be interested in. So, But there's mm -hmm. probably, in a, probably a some room for us to do uh, maybe an episode or two on that. Yeah, for sure. That sounds good. Okay, great. Well, thanks, Dave, and thanks, everybody, for listening, and we'll see everybody on the next episode of the ASPNet Monsters. Cheers. Cheers.